Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be trying something a little different than the normal gameplay that I do. I've done in the past both no commentary at all and I've also done live commentary. What we're going to try today is a little bit of post commentary on a game that I had in this sim today with the mouse. I was trying out the new uh, APHEDS round which I gotta say I am very much liking so far. So the advantage of this APHEDS round is that it gets increased penetration at both angles as well as having the higher muzzle velocity which helps with sniping a lot. The main downfall of this round is the fact that it has less explosive filler. If you look at the uh, Panzer Granat 43, you're getting 550 grams of explosive mass, whereas this one only has 64 grams. But considering the fact that in this sim, you're facing majority Soviet tanks. That means that the crew is going to be pretty compact, so any penetrating hit is going to kill them. And honestly, anything that you face, if you pen it with an 88mm, it's probably going to die even in RB. So I have a feeling that this round is going to be really, really good to use, even as a primary. In the replay, you'll see that I was carrying a couple of the other rounds, but that's just because I didn't know how this was going to perform, and I didn't want to roll out with a full thing of ammo and then fire two shots, bounce both of them and be like, huh, well I'm screwed. But let's jump into the replay and uh, I'll be commentating over top of it and we'll kind of be talking about what I'm doing in the battle and a little bit about the mouse itself because this is one of, if not my favorite tanks of all time. All right, and here we are on Finland. I went ahead and skipped the little bit of me driving in and by little bit, I mean like five minutes as you can see on the top because the mouse is not very fast, but that does not mean that you can't do very well in this tank. So this is a sim battle, which means I went ahead and turned off the uh, markers and everything in this, so you're getting the full impression of what I was seeing, give or take a little bit. The replay system in this game is far from perfect, so ignore some of the uh, little glitches and stuff that you'll notice, and there's also a couple sound issues. I'll try to uh, lower the audio just so that you don't have to listen to the really obnoxious sound. I think it's when I get over by the PT-76. It started making like a weird plane sound, which I don't even remember there being a plane up when I was playing, so I don't know what's up with that. I'm sure it's just something to do with War Thunder's hundreds of sound issues, but I digress. What am I doing in the mouse here? So, on Finland, I play this map very, very specifically every time I get the battle version. Now with the conquest version or the domination where there's multiple caps, you play it a little bit different, but when there's a battle mode on this map, always, always, always go to your cap circle. These games are always won and lost depending on who defends their cap point better. And this match is no exception because you'll see that I drive over onto the A point. There's also a Conqueror with me. I believe he does get knocked out later on. But by holding this cap circle, I am going to guarantee the fact that our team wins. Because what ends up happening if you don't do this is the enemy team will rush and get onto the A point like that PT-76. And this map and just ends. The game just ends so fast because somebody will get on. Nobody goes and resets the cap because they're too busy focusing on capping. And this map is always determined by capping when it's on a battle mode. So we're able to knock out this T-54 who was thinking he was going to be sneaky and come up. And then I noticed this little T-34-100 who thinks he's going to go ahead and uh, try to slap me frontally. Nice try. You need to actually aim for the turret peaks there, bud. But... Already we're cleaning up one tank with the APHEDS. Easy shot right through the side. Granted, the uh, 128 would do the same. But right here, we're able to snap a shot into his engine, which I was actually really impressed by the post pen with that shell. I thought for sure that wouldn't kill him. But uh, I'm not sure if the extra velocity on this round helps a little bit with that post pen. War Thunder's really weird with that. Like, higher velocity shells tend to do more damage post pen for some reason. I guess it makes a little bit of sense, but I don't know. That's just me uh, kind of being a little bit of a uh, conspiracy theorist there. That's what it feels like. I know it. when it comes to hull break, it takes into effect, but regardless, we knocked out those two guys, and now I'm just sitting here because 
I'm a mouse. What am I going to do on this map? I'm going to run around and try to chase people down? No. I max out at 20 kilometers an hour on a good day going downhill with the wind behind me. So I'm going to just try to... This guy was burning, so I tried to push him out of the way so I could see better, but... I'm trying to just kind of sit here and be a bunker. That's what the mouse is really good at, is taking up a position and just defending it. And you would do the same with this if our point was the B point, for example. Let's say I'm coming from that other spawn. Get up into that area around E4, I believe it is, and you sit right on that corner angled and just keep people from getting onto the B point. And here we go, we catch a T54. I could hear him coming. He's trying to sneak up. I don't think he even sees me, which uh, I guess our winter camo made us invisible to him or something. But uh, catch him through the side. That was a really strong pen there through that side plate being really angled. I think that comes down to the better pen on angles that the uh, APHEDS gets, which I'll take it. Easy shot through that guy. And I think I put in chat a uh, hello there <laughs> because he just rolls up completely oblivious to the fact that I was sitting there, which, I mean, it, he might need to get his eyes checked because the mouse is far from stealthy, especially when uh, you're in the middle of the open. Maybe you just thought I was a giant white rock. But now I was sitting here, and you can you might be able to hear it in the replay. I could hear an engine sound, so I knew there was another guy coming. That's why I'm watching this corner, and I was expecting him to just be kind of trying to sneak up and poke around that corner and shoot me, knowing his friend died. But then I saw him sneak up here. I didn't even know you could go up through this opening, so well played to him. That was a very clever maneuver, but I'm able to snap a shot into his track, blow it off. And at this angle, there's really no way I'm going to be able to pen the T-54 uh, 1947. That thing has insanely good upper and lower frontal hull armor. Even the turret is extremely troll, but I'm still trying nonetheless. You know, I'm testing out the round. I want to see, hey, what sort of weird, like, BS shots can I pull off with this round, knowing how much velocity it has. But still not quite enough to contest the front of that Soviet machine. And he eventually gets his track fixed, and he's trying to push up here. So I try another shot into the upper plate. Ends up hitting the lower plate, doesn't go through, which is a little surprising. I know that that plate is really strong, but I would have thought that the uh, APHEDS would be able to go through it, but I guess the angle was just too steep. So I kind of push forward. I'm angling the turret constantly. You want to make sure you do that in the mouse. And I wish I had been reloaded there. I could have snapped one through his lower plate when it flattened there. But he pushes forward, flattens his upper plate, and I snap one right through. But what I was trying to say before is keep the mouse's turret angled when you're not shooting and reloading. Because if you don't, they can snap a shot through your um, cheeks. Even though they have been buffed, there's still the weak spot in the front of the mouse, so if you angle those, like I said in my mouse guide, which you should check out if you feel like you want to play this tank well, you just angle those cheeks, and it basically means that you're invulnerable frontally unless they have heat. And here comes the fun police trying to come in and bomb me, but luckily I'm able to ignore the really wonky <laughs> replay bomb, but I'm able to back up. He does get my tracks and somehow my machine gun, but... Nonetheless, I'm still able to turn the turret as this SU-100 bears down on me. Now, I was a little worried that he would have gone through my um, turret cheek there, but it looks like he either tried to upper front plate or lower plate me, which a uh, very bad move on his part. And I'm trying to just machine gun out his crew. I ended up getting his engine. I don't know how I didn't hull break him there, but I'm able to hull break him with the 75, which that's a very good thing that you can do with the mouse. Another thing, when you're facing off against IFVs, Use the smaller gun. If you can get the drop down on it, you will be able to hole break things easily once you get that 100 millimeter round. You can hole break things like Bradleys, uh, BMPs, Warriors, basically anything that can be hole broken because it's a 75 millimeter. So try not to waste your 128. I mean, if you have nothing else to shoot at, use both. But if you have multiple targets, use the 75. And I don't know what happened with that bomb because it just kind of vanished. I think what happened is it landed in a different spot in the game, but the replay showed it landing there. I don't know, bombs have been really weird lately. But that's pretty much the end of this game, so uh, let's just hop out and see what the results were. 
So since I was stupid and didn't save the uh, actual post battle results screen, we're just going to have to go off the one that you can pull up here. But it does give you the general idea of what I was able to achieve, which I got around 50,000 silver lions in total, made about 40 grand with it after repairing the mouse, which I will say the one downside of playing the mouse in sim, which is the best place to play it if you're going to, is the repair cost. It's like 33,000. It used to be like 42,000, so... It's a lot cheaper than it was, but it's still a very, very pricey tank to play, so if you're trying to earn money, don't play the mouse and sim. If you want to have fun with the mouse, play the mouse and sim, because that is the best, unless you get a 7-7 RB game, which, let's be honest, pretty rare. But if you can get one, it's better in RB, but on average, it's better in sim, because you're normally facing off against just Soviet tanks that don't have much in the way of heat and you can pretty reliably pen them as long as you know to shoot for the sides and not the uh, upper front or lower front plate of the T-54 1947s. But regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed the video because that's it for today. If you'd like to see me take out the mouse again in the future, let me know in the comments and leave a like on this video. I'm probably going to see if I can ask for a test drive of the E100 in the future to test out the round on that tank as well, but I have to see if Gaijin will give it to me. They're kind of a little finicky about giving out the E100 test drives, and I've already done it once, so I might not be able to get one. We'll have to see about that. I'll have to ask. So uh, let me know what you think of this video and this style of video in the, des in the description. I did it again in the comments and uh, I'll see if you guys enjoyed it and if you did I'll try to do it again but uh, until the next video good luck and I'll see you there